Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the new session of uh, to a new session of Think Commons. Uh, for those of you who do not know Think Commons, it is a ambient intelligence network, meaning a network of capable of creating situations of learning based upon a collective intelligence, and usually thanks to the process of lateral exchange. Um, for the moment, this project uh, is developed in two ways, uh, through these online sessions, uh, like this one, and uh, periodic meetings. Every Wednesday at uh, 7.30 p.m., uh, Madrid time or uh, Paris time, there's a new live session on thinkcommons.org. And in every session, there's a special guest presenting a project, uh, a research, or simply coming to talk about a topic dear to him or her. Um, Think Commons is also a way to interact and uh, for mixing knowledge between people coming for a different, from different uh, professional backgrounds. This is the reason Think Commons is also organizing a physical meeting. Uh, this physical meeting will take place during the weekend of the 20th and 22nd of April in uh, Madrid. Everyone is invited to participate and uh, for those of you who are not coming from Madrid, the organization is even offering housing. I would like to come, I think. Um, I think Common started uh, thanks to the initiative of uh, Domenico de Siena in Madrid, and this is why up until now all the sessions were in Spanish. Uh, this session is the first one in English, and the ambition is to have more and more uh, sessions like this one uh, speaking in English. For uh, more information, you can visit the Facebook page on facebook.com slash thinkcommons, follow the Twitter account uh, at thinkcommons, or of course on the web on thinkcommons.org. Um, usually Think Commons sessions are presented by Domenico Di Sena, that today will be active on the chat. Uh, he will be using the name Urbano Humano. So, um, my name is Noah, uh, I'm an architect and I'm working in Paris, in France. Uh, I would like to apologize of speaking in English, uh, even though this is the first session in English, because I know uh, everyone, I mean, most of the people from the former sessions were uh, Spanish speakers. Uh, I wish there was a way to dub this video or uh, make subtitles. Um, please. Uh, Tell me if uh, I'm speaking unclearly, uh, it's not my mother tongue either. So, um, welcome to Think Commons again. When uh, Domenico asked me to speak in this uh, session, I was uh, very excited about that. I've uh, been working with the uh, Ecosistema Urbano on uh, urban social design experience. I think that uh, these online sessions are a great way to share knowledge and experience. Um, but there was a little problem when Domenico asked me to talk in the session. He specifically mentioned not to speak about architecture. And, uh, I mean, he kind of said it in a different way. And um, being an enthusiastic architect, uh, it was a quite uh, a challenge to me. It is supposed to be the domain I know most of. And, uh, well, now you're wondering what I'm going to talk about. And to start this uh, session, I would like to present you to a little video, uh, very architectural, and then we won't speak about architecture anymore. Mm. So here it is. Sorry, I have to change something here. It's very bad quality, I'm sorry, um, but it's... Où le le personnel. Quelle est la signification de la main dressée au cœur même du Capitole C'est l'expression d'une philosophie, en toute modestie, de ma part, fruit d'une vie d'examen, de lutte, 
de défaite, de victoire peut-être, parfois, pourquoi pas. Dès ma première rencontre avec M. Nehru, à Delhi et à Chandigarh, au début de la construction, la main ouverte fut présente entre nous. Et au cours des années, la main ouverte devint le couronnement de ce que j'ai appelé la force de la considération, c'est-à-dire un outil de discussion de la chose publique hors des autorités constituées, nommées et, et désignées. Et cette fosse se trouve creusée au sommet de la ville, dominée par la main, de, dominée de 28 mètres par la main, qui elle-même éclate en plein soleil sur le fond du Malaya. Le sol de cette fosse de la considération, considération pourquoi C'est-à-dire que les, les choses doivent être considérées. Et considérer les choses veut dire qu'on a réfléchi, qu'on a vu, qu'on parle de ce, qu de ce qui est réellement. Cette fosse de la considération est de 5 mètres, creusée de 5 mètres, elle comporte deux amphithéâtres de, de, de gradins. Euh, deux, pourquoi Parce qu'il y a toujours dualité, le droit des deux, des deux opinions. Ensuite, elle contient les quelques sièges des quelques personnes qui auront été qui ont désignées pour parler ce, ce soir-là, ce jour-là, ce, ce, ce crépuscule-là, si vous voulez. Il y aura la tribune de l'orateur avec une conque sonore pour répondre bien à la voix. Et dominant tout ceci, la, la, la main qui, elle, monté à 28 mètres de hauteur, monté sur B, tenez-vous bien, monté sur B, subira l'effet des vents, quels qu'ils soient, non pas pour être une girouette, pas du tout, mais pour exprimer ce qui est réellement la vie elle-même, c'est-à-dire les, les changements constants, valables, et dont on doit tenir compte, qui sont le pain quotidien, la main de quotidienne. Je n'ai fait qu'un geste de politique dans ma vie, c'est celui de la main ouverte, n'est-ce pas, j'ai dit ça en moi dit c'est je ne dis pas du tout, c'est la main ouverte pour recevoir et pour distribuer et pour donner. La main ouverte est, est une, un signe d'optimisme devant le monde moderne qui est en catastrophe. Je laisse la parole aux autres pour trouver des solutions en ce moment-ci, car c'est un point, un moment tragique. Ok. <coughs> Put this down and I don't know how to do this. Oh. Okay, so back to us, and I promise not to talk about architecture. And then I'm showing you <coughs> a, a video of uh, Le Corbusier, <laughs> which is kind of uh, the king of uh, all architects, and you're wondering why I'm showing this uh, video. So uh, what fascinates me the most about uh, architecture is actually the contrast between creating a static project, uh, a building, and the moving project, uh, its usage over time. Uh, in this session, I will talk about methods to develop projects that embrace communities. Uh, it starts 10 years ago, uh, just before uh, going to architecture school, I went to uh, for a trip in north of India. It was a be beautiful landscape, as you can see in the picture, and most of it very calm. Uh, Chandigarh was my final uh, destination. I was curious to see a city entirely built by an architect. At that time, I knew little about Le Corbusier, and uh, actually I knew more about the Indian way of living, and uh, yes, and uh, not so much about Le Corbusier. And uh, when I arrived there, this was uh, one of the first uh, images that I saw, and this is uh, kind of quite unusual for a city in India. Um, if you went to India, you, you can understand what I'm talking about. It's very vast and uh, not so dense, and already I felt, felt that this city was different. So um, very quickly I understood what was wrong with uh, Chandigarh. Um, it was trying to create a tomorrow city based on a manifesto and presumptions of how it should function. I think it was a very vast and sectorized place and uh, even only to uh, visit the capital that you can see in the picture you need to get a special authorization uh, which I received after claiming study in architecture. Anyway, I'm not here to uh, criticize uh, Le Corbusier. 
or Tanigar, but I'm here to talk about this picture here, which shows how this uh, monument, hand uh, monument that we've seen in the video, is being invaded by uh, people playing uh, football, actually. And uh, this uh, sector here that is being invaded by uh, uh, a marketplace, and I think that this is why why this place interests me is that uh, architecture and urban design is the result of the society we are living in and um, I think that manifestos are not the solutions the solution for today uh, we rather I rather create projects that incorporate latest innovations so uh, this uh, trip and uh, other things uh, made me wondering about uh, what kind of tools can we use today to make efficient use with the, of complex urban development and how can we avoid conventional scheme of the client uh, and finished project how can we incorporate citizens as, as active agents in the urban development and how can we respond to a user-centered process by keeping programs and design flexible First, uh, to answer um, this question, I try to think about the society we are living in today. I think uh, it is very much global. I mean, we can define it as the global, as the connections between communities today are both local, individual households and organization maintaining interpersonal social networks and uh, combine extensive local and long distance interactions. These communities are very much network, uh, both in the virtual and physical space. As uh, Bruno Latour <coughs> stated, the more digital, the less virtual, and the more material a given activity becomes. All these virtual networks exist even more in the physical space. Also, uh, user-centered uh, commodities today are made um, in a user-centered process where the needs and the wants of the, of the users and the products are given extensive attention. I think the tendency today is even to a more personalized uh, process, production of uh, commodities. So uh, these factors, among others, generate cities that are complex social systems requiring efficient tools to develop proficient management. Uh, it demands a new way of thinking and working, which makes the transition towards a sustainable society a long learning process, which makes uh, the initiative of Think Commons even uh, more interesting to the society we're living in. I believe there's no such a thing as universal solutions, and even like putting words into the board now is difficult because defining and defining solutions is not the way I think we should work as architects today. Um, I think that uh, cities today require working with tactics and it is important to draw the difference between tactics and strategies. Um, I think um, I would like to state uh, LTL, uh, an architect's trio that uh, that will define the difference between strategies and as a strategy is defining the legitimate mode of research and establish the boundaries of acceptable practice. It's an institutional process like Le Corbusier's five points or codes of new urbanism and tactics they are lack of specific location and uh, they survive through improvisation and use advantages. Uh, they indicate a method of thinking and practice and not uh, introducing solutions or conclusions and which takes me to uh, create condition uh, to the next uh, point here uh, creating conditions which I think it's about applying creative opportunities rather than instantly offering a closed design uh, by creating conditions we can transform we can enrich and update the conventional design process engaging more stakeholders into the practice and integrating uh, existing and new communities to spaces and buildings. This kind of approach can be applied um, to the... Oh, it's a bit cut here. I hope it's readable. Please let me know if it's not. Um, 
to the habitat, for instance, uh, I mean, sorry, for habitats, for mixed use development, and for public space. So, um, to the habitat, for instance, uh, communities can act outside of the dominant thought and behavior pattern by organizing the way they live and share spaces, commodities and values. Uh, this kind of approach uh, can be seen in projects such as co-housing. For instance, this example of uh, Lavoir de Buisson in uh, Paris, it's a group of 12 families who uh, joined forces to build this co-housing project. The year was 1983, and it took them four years and 100 meetings to build this uh, humble place. Um, it's actually pretty good for Paris because usually we don't have uh, so much space, and especially no gardens. Uh, so uh, this house is um, positions uh, around three shared spaces and a room of 80 square meters, which is also shared. And this room is very versatile. It was yet first used as a nursery for the 20 much children in the house. And then it became a place for uh, meetings, for birthday. Anyway, that represents the idea of uh, co-housing. And uh, in a mixed-use development, uh, I think we can talk also about the interactions beyond, uh, interactions between buildings and uh, themselves and the community that are created around it, and how buildings can influence proximate spaces and neighbors, neighborhoods. Um, this example of 6B, Le Cibet, is a, a new place of creation and dissemination in the former office building located in Saint-Denis. Uh, it's a suburb uh, next to Paris. And it hosts more than 150 residents. Um, it's 400, no, 4,000 uh, square meters. Uh, this initiative uh, is interesting. It was First, it was born from the gathering of individuals and uh, art structures that uh, came together, put their funds, and uh, created this space. This space is uh, open, and it's a space for creation and uh, workspace sharing. And what is particularly interesting in this space is that it's giving back something to the neighborhood it is situated in. So um, with the transformation of Saint-Denis, the, um, the space, uh, Le Cibet, creates a ways of interacting with the uh, neighbors by having events, uh, exhibitions, uh, film projections and other things. So um, the third point is uh, about the public space and how can different stakeholders act together to create a community around the project. Uh, this is what I call mixing interactions. Uh, a great example for that is uh, Place au Changement, of a collective, etc. I think uh, maybe the architects uh, among us know this uh, project. Uh, it's, um, it's also very interesting. It's answering an ongoing uh, urban changes in the, within the neighborhood. So uh, the idea in this uh, project is to represent a plan of an imaginary housing on the ground in the intersection of the wall, you can see it here. And um, the, it's, uh, I think they won a, a competition. Anyway, uh, this allows to the people, uh, the, uh, the passerbys or the neighbors, the citizens, to imagine how would be to live in the future buildings and to get the idea of the impact that uh, it can have uh, over the years. Uh, collective, etc. made uh, a series of uh, workshops and events in this uh, space that were open to everyone. And uh, they invited them to uh, join activities, uh, uh, paintings, concerts, circus workshops. And uh, they documented everything through a blog. And uh, what is interesting is that the place today uh, is a, a, a space where neighbors can event identify with and they still go there and create events themselves so uh, <clears throat> yeah great street, street art uh, please if you have any questions and if you have uh, if I'm speaking too fast because I know I can do so please uh, 
comment the chat. <laughs> So uh, now, after giving these uh, three examples of how communities can be integrated into projects, I would like to speak about uh, three different projects that I took part in. Uh, the first one is uh, an ongoing uh, project, uh, Experience in Paris. Uh, the second one is a study case, and the third one is a uh, practice, I mean a, a real project, um, you will see later. So um, yeah, Experience at Paris is um, a project that started when a group of uh, three young entrepreneurs contacted us with the idea to build a hostel in Paris. According to them, uh, even though while Paris is one of the most visited cities in Europe, it also having the smallest amount of hostels. So there's a economic uh, potential behind it and what we were interested uh, was uh, to develop a project uh, bringing local interactions to the age of global tourism and to make the journey more sustainable, authentic by building and nourishing a community between tourists and locals. The four uh, nice looking uh, girls here, uh, one guy sorry, uh, they are very authentic tourists. Anyway, um, with the global uh, urbanization and the evolution of infrastructure and transportation means, mobility is becoming more and more accessible, making tourism a low-cost commodity. Uh, everybody knows the um, EasyJet, which uh, makes uh, tourism almost uh, redundant. Uh, there is um, also the data shared online demand the real coherence between quality and prices and services and allowing multiple interactions as, as we know. Um, so traveling today is becoming somehow a less enhanced experience, uh, easy to consume in a society that is constantly changing. Um, cities tend to have uh, one or several touristic areas separated from the local ones. Uh, this is somehow a representation of a, of a Parisian uh, journey, uh, full of well-known logos and places, but uh, somehow it could be a real mess. And uh, yes, uh, this picture uh, <clears throat> is uh, showing a very nice uh, souvenir street in Paris, because Paris is very conscious of its tourists. Uh, they flow through certain streets and districts like a torrent of money and futility. Um, this is a souvenir shop say, on the way to Montmartre, are an example of uh, how to sell trinkets to tourists. And um, you know this barrette here, uh, the barrette here on the picture, I mean, I've never seen anyone wearing them in Paris. So um, the normal city flees from the tourist track and living a brightly colored uh, cultural wasteland, uh, which the conventional tourist carefully stays within. It's uh, kind of hard to find a non-touristic places in Paris, uh, Paris if you don't know Paris, and the same in I think in other capitals in the world. Um, it reminds me of the first time I went to Paris and uh, I tried to find places that are not touristic and what I did is I just followed uh, a guy, um, the most French looking guy I could find in the metro and uh, this is how I discovered pa Paris. Anyway, um, so um, the tourist, uh, the client of uh, the hostels today can be divided to two uh, major types, um, backpackers and flashbackers, and they share um, a non-institutionalized uh, form of travel. Uh, when they travel, they're constantly looking for the real experience, and this is what, what we try to create uh, with this project. They look for an experience, and they appreciate new technologies that can improve the, da the, the daily lives. So how can we enhance their experience? How can we create something uh, to the city rather than just consuming it? What kind of interaction can be created between locals and tourists? 
Uh, these are the questions um, that we ask ourselves. And um, the idea was with this project is to create a hostel uh, that is uh, very flexible and it is working hand to hand with a, what we call the city, city exchange platform. Um, and so the hostel is uh, offering rooms but uh, of also spaces of interactions with the city and working with this web platform that shares uh, current activities in the city through existing websites and announcements posted by local businesses, service pro providers, and so forth. So uh, working together, the uh, putting together, sorry, the hostel with the web platforms, uh, transform it to a tangible space influenced by the interactions um, created. Um, this is uh, an illustration uh, of the um, of the platform. Uh, it's uh, I mean just like a search engine, but uh, uh, allowing people to freely put announcements. Of course, the more local, the better. Uh, so you can look for. Uh, according to topics like sports, activity, wellness, culture, speed, purpose, time of day, and so on. Uh, so, yeah, that's what is written there for dancing classes to underground dining. Uh, city, city Exchange Platform holds a rich and diverse database. And this is uh, to illustrate uh, the hostel um, that is uh, with the idea of making it as sustainable as possible, flexible, innovative, modular, and so on. Um, the idea is that uh, the flexibility, the modularity of the sleeping, uh, the accommodation possibilities uh, opens the hostel to different kind of clients. So we can see here um, the guy that we seen in the beginning uh, saying how much he likes coming to Paris because he loves the uh, French cuisine and uh, he prefers to save all his money on uh, accommodation uh, and to sleep in a capsule but to go to the greatest uh, restaurants of Paris um, well that's uh, kind of it's in French I'm sorry I didn't translate it but uh, he's talking about um, this is the, the um, oh there's a way to minimize this. Oh, that's now it's better. Better. <laughs> so this is uh, his uh, his uh, um, program. Uh, what he uses in the city, what he uses in the hostel, and how these two interact. Uh, next is um, this little girl that came with her parents, and they they chose to sleep in this. Uh, a bigger room because the, all the four of them can sleep together. Her mother is like uh, uh, interested in design, so they went to make this uh, design fair. She was bored, but then she went to to uh, to um, cruise on the on the sand, and she was happy. And so basically, it's the idea of uh, mixing um, uh, experiences and people, and uh, also offering. Uh, the spaces within the hostel as exchange platforms because they uh, offer, um, for instance, uh, students in cuisine to come in and cook for the people or to do dance classes and so on. Um, no questions? Okay. So, I mean, the exchange in the local activities is enhancing the traveling experience. It becoming it is becoming a learning journey because the the um, local community and the tourists are exchanging, and uh, also having an important, interesting uh, economical uh, impact potentially. So um, next is um, five uh, for one is uh, create about creating a community between, between inhabitants. I don't know if it's a, a the the image is a bit static, so I was thinking about uh, putting a a video to make make it a bit funny. This time it's not Le Corbusier. Um, but before 
have to Neighbors, we are neighbors. Come and meet the neighbors. I'm Sharon. I'm David. We live here. I'm a nurse. I'm an engineer. I'm Bella. I'm Tammy. We're neighbors. And Mr. Cohen, too. We live in the flats in our hometown full of neighbors like me and you. Neighbors, yes, we're neighbors. We are all so neighbors. I'm Benny, I'm Hannah, we're mother and son. I have your letters and I have fun. I'm Sarah, I'm Donna, we're, we're neighbors. neighbors. And Mr. Kashtan, too. We live in houses and we live there. We meet and work in the village square. Come in. Hello. A package. For me? Apples. Bananas. Coffee. No tea. We're, We're neighbors. Friendly. Okay, <laughs> so you might think this is a bit weird. Um, I think that's uh, that was actually a, a, an English uh, an English class, uh, and I think it's funny because it's uh, kind of relevant to the idea of uh, community between inhabitants and uh, neighbors. Yes, it's a, it's another beautiful uh, high quality video that we all like. Um, but it's uh, yeah the idea of uh, who knows uh, who knows uh, his, his neighbors I mean uh, and why do, I mean anyway it's um, about knowing na your neighbors and about uh, creating a community between inhabitants because this is a uh, what is the project about um, five to one is an imaginary study case I have invented uh, to conclude a year of studying in the Ecole Nationale Supérieure de Architecture. Um, it's a story of uh, five families that uh, is a group of friends and they decided to join resources and knowledge to create a building together. Uh, this initiative uh, responds to the current situations in France, um, as you can see in the, this uh, little uh, graph uh, call, called the Tunnel de Tunnel of a uh, Frigate. The ratio of housing prices index relative to the disposable income per household uh, is uh, worse than ever. Um, it is more and more difficult to have access to affordable housing in Paris. And uh, also space is becoming a very precious commodity. It's not far away from what you see here. I mean, in Paris, it's a, it's a very big problem. And also flexibility, uh, as uh, within time, family, uh, families grow, uh, they split, they change, they uh, grow old, they grow young, and so, so on. So uh, the question, here in this project is uh, how can we access to affordable housing in Paris? How can we design a sure flexibility within time? Uh, what interactions can exist between habits, uh, habitat and uh, urban development um, and so forth? The co-housing project uh, is to, the idea here is to create a community uh, from the design phase until enduring functioning. Um, so the community together will observe, localize, program, manage, interact, mutualize, finance, and design. And the role of the architect in that case is to construct uh, the project by animating the community. It offers uh, a guidance uh, to determine and establish the project and working with the clients closely. Uh, it is the one, the architect is the one who's holding meetings and workshops to design the, the project together with the families. So um, the story here is uh, five families uh, getting together. Uh, 
uh, the first thing, uh, I mean, what I'm trying to do here is just to talk about uh, a, a quick methodology of uh, how a co-housing project can be developed. So um, when you work with uh, five uh, or more families, I mean, the more uh, people, the more complicated it can become. I mean, as architects, uh, as an architect, uh, those of you who are architects, you already know how hard it is to work with one client, imagine with a five or ten or more. So uh, the idea first is to choose a, a leader or a speaker of, of the community and uh, to make me many, many meetings and workshops uh, to share together uh, the values, to talk about the values that uh, the people share together, to... Um, to talk about uh, what are the important site attributes and layout, uh, uh, the building performance and quality, financial goals, uh, schedule, life projects of the families organized because it demands so much uh, coordination and organization that it could be very, very complex and the things that are agreed between the people should be written and discussed through a, a long series of uh, meetings. Um, in the study case, they they decided to share uh, laundry services, a guest room, a cinema, a library, childcare, and garden, and uh, to have an electric car uh, and uh, shared with everyone storage and and dwelling units for for uh, uh, alternating uh, as a guest room. The site uh, that was chosen was in Montreuil. Uh, I think that the, the price of the... I mean, what is interesting in this kind of initiative is, of course... Uh, ah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the project Quattro of... Um, sorry, I'm stopping for a moment to look at the chat. Uh, the, the talk... Um, Domenico is asking me to talk about the project uh, Quattro. Um, maybe you want to put a link to it. I don't know. It's a it's a, an idea of a changing um, to a, exchanging a room in Madrid uh, to a, a creation of a, something, and it's actually in uh, Domenico's uh, apartment in Madrid. It's very very nice apartment, and the idea is to uh, whoever is interested to come and stay there for a while and. Uh, can use the uh, existing spaces and, and instead of paying, the, it the person can leave something back to the community. The community is called Quattro. Ah, okay. Um, so anyway, um, I think that's a, yeah, it's a little example of uh, co-housing in uh, Madrid. I think it's great. and. That's the kind of uh, project I would like to develop now in uh, Paris after after uh, experimenting and exploring this project. And uh, what is interesting in the Parisian uh, context uh, specifically uh, is that uh, it is also very very um, uh, low cost uh, if you compare it to, to normal uh, housing uh, in Paris. Uh, as the, um, for instance, the site here uh, had the price of four hundred thousand, and um, after uh, building up uh, the different uh, apartments and sharing uh, financial expenses and everything, it, it came down to uh, almost half the price of the local market in Paris. So uh, the project. I'm I'm trying to show as less uh, less of uh, architectural drawings as possible, <laughs> and more talk about the ideas. So uh, sorry if uh, this came up, uh, but uh, it's important to, to talk about that too a little bit. Um, the project uh, that emerges at the end is a is a little housing unit of two floors and the ground floor there is a garage for cars and and uh, bikes of course and uh, there's a place a laundry room a, a playroom and um, and at the second floor oh no 
uh, there's second, uh, first and second floor. Um, there's the different um, apartments that are uh, constructed in a way that um, that the, um, there's a, a, a service space in the middle and around it uh, the living space. So it's very flexible uh, according to each of the family's needs. Each plan is a bit different and accommodating between two to five people. Uh, the last floor has a studio. Uh, uh, and that's it. Um, so yes, the, um, the idea here, here is to work uh, with the community of inhabitants uh, to develop these kind of projects and uh, therefore uh, guaranteeing a way to involve the community all along the process. So um, now to, I think, uh, the most uh, interesting project, <laughs> the most uh, real one, I think, I mean, the only real one here. Um, it's a Dream Hammer. I don't know if uh, maybe some of you know it already. It's a, a project I developed with the Ecosystema Urbano. Uh, the project started as a competition entitled Art in the Main Square uh, for implementing an art piece and the main square in Hammer, as you can see here. Yes, uh, Dream Hammer. <laughs> um, so, uh, Dream Hammer is uh, suggested an expanded uh, top down participation uh, process, engaging all kind of stakeholders around the topic of what will be the next, uh, what will be the future of the square, the main. The main screen, uh, the ma main square. square. Uh, some, I mean, it is defined as a collective dream to redesign the main square of Hamar. Hamar is a, a city 130 kilometers uh, from uh, Oslo in Norway. So uh, the project was launched uh, last uh, summer and it is still ongoing. Uh, it is divided to three steps. The first one was a preliminary design, uh, the second uh, d during three months, the second was this uh, participation process uh, I'm going to talk about, and uh, the final is the design phase uh, lasting around six months. Uh, so it goes all the way until the uh, construction documents. So uh, while working with the uh, Ecosystema Urbano, I had uh, the great opportunity to develop and implement uh, Dream Hammer together with a, a team of diverse uh, proficiencies. During this period, uh, in parallel to working in Madrid, I also uh, went to Hammer during a few months and to work and share with the local citizens their view and uh, how this project can be realized. Uh, I think uh, it's still uh, yeah it's still ongoing uh, dream hammer. I think the uh, if we talk about the context to this kind of project uh, worldwide nowadays uh, from Wall Street uh, to Delhi, a movement of uh, these enchanted and uh, leaderless citizens are reclaiming public space. I, uh, our friends in Madrid all know this uh, space here in the picture, and uh, they also live within these uh, initiatives uh, like uh, 15M. Uh, I think it's um, the same generation, uh, it's, it's, it's the younger generation, 20 or 30 years old uh, people, uh, using widely internet and uh, having the, where the possibilities of uh, consumption and inventions are endless. And so are the tools to create communities. Our society is uh, rapidly changing and uh, constantly reinventing itself. And Dream Hammer is uh, using uh, democracy as a tool to reclaim public space. It uh, responds to the demands of the different stakeholders, the expectations and desires. And uh, by including citizens to the creative process, uh, it has it can have a direct and immediate uh, benefit. Somehow uh, when you see uh, this image and then you see this that was actually here, I'm sorry I'm like switching <laughs> uh, images fast, uh, here I mean in, um, in this very uh, 
calm uh, surrounding uh, in Norway that actually maybe doesn't have the same needs as uh, Madrid and other places right now, but uh, you feel that this is very uh, related to the actual uh, situation today. So, um, as you can see in the, the follow-on diagram, Dreamhammer is a very ambitious project because it has been uh, working with many different satellites. Uh, the following components that you see here in the picture, they detail the different set of networks that we have developed for providing the fertile grounds. And uh, as I was saying before, I think it's very important to create the conditions and rather than you know, uh, draw conclusions, these points, the different satellites here, are to create different conditions to dynamize the society, uh, whether local or global, around a, a common topic. So uh, the satellites were used to regroup different stakeholders and to allow them to work together. Uh, if it was uh, for local reasons, uh, we asked questions like, uh, how does the square should function uh, within the changing seasons? And uh, globally, we also had like on online uh, workshops asking uh, questions about tactile, uh, uh, tactical, sorry, urbanism in, in uh, general. Uh, some of you might not have heard of this uh, uh, workshop. Anyway, so um, Hama was a vivid set of networks. And um, to explain them briefly, uh, first uh, was the preliminary design uh, that uh, offered uh, the scheme, the basic scheme to work on for uh, the, the four months. Um, as you can see here, it was divided between the uh, lively streetscape, social nature, natural ring and the creative arena. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I can talk for hours about Dream Hammer and trying to go to the next uh, part of the, on the same topic. Uh, the f the, this uh, physical lab uh, was our um, local office. I think it's a, it was a great and very, I mean, very interesting experience to be based uh, just in front of uh, the square, as you can see. Um, because the, this laboratory was not only a laboratory, it was also something like a, a bar or a, a clinic uh, or, I don't know, it was very open and uh, inviting and people were coming to see us for different reasons and uh, uh, not only and sometimes not, not at all for uh, Stuttgart. And uh, it was a very interesting political status between, because we were, uh, as I said before, we, we won, a, a, um, the, the it was a, after a winning competition, but, um, you know, not being situated in the municipality, but in this uh, uh, building was uh, giving us opportunities to really have a dialogue with the citizens. So... Uh, this is uh, the physical lab. Uh, this is where we had all the workshops and lectures and uh, and so on. Uh, also, uh, yeah, the picture here uh, shows uh, to some of the tools we, we were using. Uh, I think this uh, model, for instance, was uh, an interesting one. Uh, by the way, it's uh, uh, the same kind of uh, uh, technology. I mean, the same kind of application is used today in Paris in the Pavillon d'Arsenal. Uh, it's an LED screen that can actually be used to project any kind of image into the contextual model. And um, actually it was used uh, more by uh, students uh, because they knew how to, to make it function. But we also used it with uh, uh, the younger students that made the uh, drawings and that could be inserted directly into the square. Um, this uh, the on-site uh, workshops and lectures around uh, five topics, very banal, simple topics to uh, arouse people's attention and uh, to attract people uh, with the different interests, uh, activities, environment, technology, seasonal strategy, and people. Uh, the on-site workshops and lectures were held by. Uh, community activators and uh, creative guests coming from all around the world. I will talk about that later, but um, 
that's a uh, like that that's uh, you can see here uh, it's the physical club uh, in action uh, academic network um, okay uh, there's a question I I will answer it just after this because I what is the what was the more challenging in this project is is actually the the part uh, that I would like to uh, talk about after presenting it. Um, well, the academic network, um, uh, which is a, was amazing uh, network of uh, universities around the world, and urban actions that were uh, physical actions on the square um, that sometimes were very provocative. This. Uh, this in the picture here, you can see the um, uh, open and uh, free lunch that was made by uh, actually one of the academic network, the Bergen uh, students, uh, architecture students, and that was a great success. The digital lab um, that had uh, experiences, online uh, workshops, um, used also the mobile app and the web platform to share everything that was going on. Uh, experiences, sorry, I have to explain what it is. It's something like we're doing today. It's, uh, I mean, using the, the live stream uh, tool. It was uh, somehow an anthropological uh, tool, I can say, because it was uh, to broadcast what was happening on site uh, every every week. So, uh, oh, I think there's a problem I will disconnect it I, is it working I, I have the impression that, uh, uh, okay it's okay sorry um, anyway so uh, the digital lab it's something uh, similar to what we have uh, we're doing today and the cultural rucksack which uh, engaged uh, 1292 uh, children uh, youngsters from 12 to 16 to work uh, also in the topic of um, of the square and to build uh, uh, models uh, suggesting uh, solutions and what they are dreaming for the square. This is a, um, a diagram explaining how we work with all these children and how we engage them into the process. So um, <laughs> to conclude, no actually not to conclude at all but all these different satellites were actually, I would say, the easiest part of, of the project. I mean, setting the grounds, uh, creating the conditions, um, the satellites uh, were a huge amount of uh, work uh, in terms of human resources. But it was uh, it went very well and was pretty easy to implement uh, in that sense. But uh, what was uh, what was what was uh, challenging to answer uh, the question from before was getting participation. Um, after creating the conditions, and uh, we had to create people uh, people's involvement in uh, the process. Um, this par pyramid from before is uh, showing um, showing the, how people could um, the different ways people could take part of the project. So again, we were there, uh, but uh, first of all, we were uh, a, a, a Spanish company coming to Norway. So networks were not on our side. Uh, we had to create everything from scratch and uh, everything very very fast because. Uh, I mean, in an um, ideal uh, situation uh, for a participation process, we wouldn't have a limited amount of time, but we had very little time for this kind of uh, project and we had to set our networks very, very quickly. Also, uh, another way, uh, and that's one of the ways to get uh, participation, the other way to get uh, participation was uh, using all sorts of, um, of different communication um, uh, means uh, tools and the third uh, part was to provoke so uh, creating web networks uh, uh, creating networks uh, was a very difficult uh, 
thanks for the short time, uh, but it was, I think, the most challenging, the most interesting. We had to to do that. We organized a lot of group meetings with the people from the community, from associations, from universities. Uh, we engaged uh, five different community activators that were key people from the community, uh, sometimes also well-known people from the community that uh, were also uh, responsible of getting participation. And uh, they were our uh, ambassadors, the ambassadors of Jimmy Hamar, because they were locals, they were speaking the language, and they were knowing the people, the culture. So this is kind of the way to, to get into the network. The commune and the municipality was also an, a great way because it's a, it's a huge, a big amount of people uh, compared to the size of uh, of the city, and uh, also we we made many interviews. We met with a lot of people. It was a very big networking uh, process. Very very nice. Uh, this is pictures of uh, pictures of uh, the community activators standing in the square. Um, the kind of meetings we had uh, with the uh, people to get uh, their involvement, interviews. Uh, communication is the second, uh, the second challenge and the second uh, way of uh, getting people uh, in to, in to involve into the process. Communication uh, was very easily made with, uh, I think, with the digital means, but was not enough uh, for the... Um, for the physical space, for the, I mean, it was not enough for Hamar because I think we mainly communicated also in uh, English and uh, I guess that's something very cultural. Each person, I mean, each place would react differently to this kind of uh, communication. So we had to go very much into uh, the field and uh, we did that by going into the local news. Uh, the Comune, sorry, the Comune is uh, uh, the municipality of Hamar. Um, <clears throat> so um, what we did that was that we talked with, uh, we, with the um, community of Hamar through the newspaper. We realized very quickly that the newspaper is the most efficient way to get people's attention. And... Uh, Sometimes we did that uh, purposely by sending articles uh, to the newspaper and sometimes we did it unpurposely when uh, we provoked and maybe we provoked too much or maybe with the lack of communication the, the newspaper wrote about us but it was good because we it managed to get people into the game, into the participation. Uh, that's um, uh, an example of, uh, of an article that was published and the kind of articles that were published during the process getting people's attention. Ah, I've seen you in the newspaper. Ah, what is this project? I mean, that's the way, one of the ways we got people's attention. Um, uh, also, uh, posters, put in many of them around the, around the city, flyers um, and uh, newspaper ads. And uh, the, the third uh, part uh, was uh, provoking. Uh, provocation is, uh, as I said, a great way to get people's attention. And we did that uh, simply by... I mean, one simple way was actually being there, being Spanish. Uh, I mean, uh, coming from a Spanish company uh, to a uh, Norwegian uh, land uh, was uh, very much, uh, I think... Uh, could be a, a kind of a provocation to some people, so that was getting people's attention, which was good for the for the project, and also um, um, this kind of uh, urban actions that uh, also attract people's attention um, and acting on the very grounds of the project. Uh, this provo specific provocation is putting a. I, I used uh, unused uh, car uh, filled with flowers on what used to be a parking lot, which is the square. So that's a provocation. So uh, to summarize, um, Dream Hammer, uh, as we seen before, the satellites very structured, uh, separated from one another, uh, very much programmed. Uh, more, I, I would say. Uh, related to a strategy, and this is what happens uh, after 
dream hammer i mean after the participation process all these networks that we have uh, created they are connected to each other and they uh, create a story uh, different stories uh, to the public space and within the people uh, this is to me the success of the project is creating a community a discussion between the people and uh, a legacy to uh, the future uh, physical space because it's not only about of course collecting ideas it's about putting people together to to discuss and uh, to finish with uh, the presentation and to finish with the dream hammer uh, this is uh, an initiative uh, developed uh, for the to summarize the first part of the project, uh, Future Hammer book, uh, making living the opening to future developments. Uh, the idea with the book is to tell the stories within the the people the community is created. So um, it is divided into eight different stories and uh, opening up to. Conclusions. I don't like the word conclusions, but uh, um, I don't know um, next phase <laughs> conditions or whatever things we have. I we call the things we have learned from Hammer, and uh, to present uh, to prevent to present uh, one of the stories, um, an instant urban action to go. It's uh, talking about the this public uh, free lunch I showed you before and uh, what it is created between. So it started up with uh, an initiative of the Bergen architecture uh, students. Uh, they even brought a cow into the square. Uh, it was a huge success. Many people came and uh, met people from really different backgrounds uh, and different uh, agendas. And um, it talks about, it puts up a, a recipe talking about how to, how it is, easy it is to put the conditions to create such a lunch and, and to, to bring people uh, together. And then it uh, talks about that during the lunch, uh, this girl here, Joanna, um, she started to be involved in the project and uh, later on, Created uh, created her own workshop actually. So uh, new connections were uh, weaving in the within the community uh, around uh, the project, and I think that's what's interesting about the uh, Dream Hammer. So um, this uh, book is um, an initiative uh, that I would like to develop uh, further on and to make it as a collection of uh, stories and with Ecosystem Albano to develop it to a real book. Um, I don't know, I think that's that's about it. I think that we can... I don't know if there's any questions. I can talk more. <laughs> I don't know, maybe uh, Domenico wants to say something or somebody wants to... Um, just to summarize... Uh, yeah, the, the, the most challenging... Um, as I said in the dream in the dream hammer um, uh, in the dream hammer project is uh, really getting people to involved in the project uh, keep I mean taking them away from their daily life and putting them in to a different uh, set of uh, mind and that's uh, that that is why uh, we were there and uh, I think what is very, very interesting to an architect is also being there. Uh, it's a new way of looking at, uh, at a site as an architect. I mean, before when, we, when I did projects in architecture, it was, you know, looking about uh, the surroundings, the re orientation of the site, uh, 
uh, the 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 data, the statistics, things like that. But being in the in the site, living there, uh, interacting with the community, it's not also about influencing the community, but uh, influencing us, uh, the architects, uh, and uh, changing our minds regarding the project and how it can be actually developed in the future. Um, the project nowadays is ongoing. I think they have uh, presented uh, the... Um, the next uh, um, design, the latest design to the Comune, and uh, as far as I know, was from what I heard, uh, it was very well accepted. So now it's uh, about um, getting getting to next phase, which is uh, uh, drawing the project more into detail. Um, in the book, uh, we also wrote down uh, different types of. Uh, Things we have learned from Hamar and uh, kind of uh, non conclusions. Uh, we try to orient the, the municipality, the comune, um, to actions that they can take now regarding the, co the, the, the community, the people, how to get them together, and also uh, what kind of legacy it can um, leave, and of course, how what kind of ideas we can incorporate it into the, the project. It was very interesting because, of course. The, the debate, the subject was developing uh, um, far from Stotoget because we have uh, the square, we have uh, realized many different things uh, through this process. What did I learn uh, from the Dreamhammer experience? Is um, as I said now, I think it's uh, it's very important to. Uh, integrate uh, communities uh, into the process of design. I think, uh, to me, as I try to uh, expose in this uh, presentation, it's, uh, it's a way to make um, architecture more interdisciplinary. Um, I think um, it's, not a, it's not anymore about uh, building architectural projects or urban design projects, it's about uh, interacting with different disciplines and uh, integrating it to to the design process like uh, dream hammer i think this kind of approach should be applied and differently to the, to to other projects and uh, i'm sure the results will be more uh, relevant to the way we are living today I don't know if um, oh I can show another video and uh, this time this time it's a high quality video but um, I don't know whether if there's any other questions. Domenico. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm place making, and um, I, I don't, I, I don't know um, about uh, as I tried to explain in the beginning, um, applying concepts, uh, place making, participation, uh, and so on. I think I, I'm deliberately not using it because I think it's um, uh, too much defined. Uh, I think that. Um, to me, getting involved in different ways, mixing, uh, um, integrating community is is um, the key for uh, creating better spaces or creating more successful spaces. Um, again, participation in Hammer, for instance, was uh, somehow an excuse. I mean. Uh, Participation, the classic participation of getting uh, ideas from people. This it was a um, a motor to bring them together. So I think it's uh, this is why I'm trying to find uh, another way to present this kind of projects because uh, it's about bringing people together on, around the topic. And uh, yeah, um, I think. Um, I think it's uh, very re very relevant to, uh, to 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 today because I think it's uh, um, something that can use the all kind of tools um, and integrate them to the design.
process. Um, what I try to show also in Hammer uh, with the Dream Hammer experience is that uh, sometimes the digital tools and um, uh, the the methodology of um, of collecting ideas and all that it's not enough. We have to go to use uh, more conventional tools like. Uh, simple communication, uh, go to talk to people, uh, meeting, uh, all those, those things are very important to to the success of such uh, initiatives. Um, if I think that uh, new technologies can ha help us, I think uh, they are already, already helping us uh, a lot. I think uh, as an architect, uh, I think that uh, we should uh, integrate them more into spaces uh, either by this kind of processes or uh, by in the design itself getting them into um, the actual physical space and um, I think uh, new new technologies uh, uh, changing our lives uh, in a drastic way I think they're helping us, but they can also uh, easily ruin our lives. <laughs> I mean, I think that, uh, for instance, uh, nowadays, uh, the amount of emails uh, one can receive in a day, uh, I can see, um, especially like uh, people that are very, uh, um, uh, that are, for instance, uh, working with uh, many different people, uh, you know, sending an email uh, is... Uh, less engaging, engaging than uh, uh, calling or meeting and uh, it's also not related to the real time. Uh, you can send an email at uh, 3 a.m. and uh, the person who receives it will know about that but uh, they, doesn't care, they don't care. So I think that there's uh, some kind of uh, uh, overload of information that can uh, be created uh, with uh, all these uh, new technologies and this is um, yeah, very kind of risky to the way we're living and uh, could be uh, also risky because it disconnected us from the actual interaction from of people. Um, yeah, I mean, too much information. Uh, I think that... Um, this uh, kind of project also is uh, kind of playing with uh, too much information because it's uh, adding more information, it's taking people's ideas and, and putting them together, it's uh, adding networks to, uh, to existing networks. I mean, it's, uh, it's risky, but I think it's, um, uh, it relates to uh, the ambient awareness way of, uh, of, of uh, living and where you... It's 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 hard to focus and 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 really go into the deepness of of one thing today. You have to be aware of what's going on around you. Um, <laughs> any yes, I don't know. Yes, I think I, I can show you. Uh, another video and then if you have other questions uh, is it alright? Um, just a part of the video mm.
Yes, I'm back. Um, yes, what I like about this um, uh, video is uh, actually this is if you look at this part here, it's a video. It's a performance. Uh, it's an urban performance uh, in uh, Lyon. Uh, it's uh, made uh, with uh, dancers and locals and people, uh, as you can see now in the picture. And uh, I think what is really, really nice about the this uh, this uh, project is how the community again has been involved and. Uh, they are working together with the dancers, uh, the use of touch, the use of uh, interactions uh, for a um, mutual cause, a mutual project. And um, I think that's a kind of um, work that I'm interested in integrating into architecture. Um, so there was one question. Um, yes, I will put the link after that, um, what uh, what you learned in the Dream Hammer experience? I think um, by far it's the most interesting experience I uh, I've had in my professional life, and um, what I've learned uh, is uh, how can communities be integrated. Um, uh, into uh, the process of uh, conceiving a project in different ways. Uh, I've learned uh, how important it is to to create uh, this kind of contact uh, with the community in um, terms of, uh, in, especially in uh, typologies such as uh, public uh, space. And uh, to me, it's almost uh, I will be a little bit radical, but to me it will be even absurd not to, I mean, dangerous not to do such a thing uh, when con conceiving public space today. I think uh, it, it should be a must. Uh, of course, uh, as I'm again against um, manifestos, I think uh, it should be adapted to the situation each time. But uh, I think it's very interesting uh, and it could be very changing uh, to the actual and uh, eventual project. Um, do you think because of the new technologies, uh, the new public buildings have to be rethink in a formal way? Normally we develop the activities. Um, I, I think I don't understand the question. If if the new technologies, how you mean how uh, can technologies be integrated in the physical space? I think um, I think I mean I think uh, there's one project that I really like. It's a uh, um, I don't know if it's answering the question, but uh, it's uh, Domenico's uh, initiative uh, uh, of Sentinet idea ID. Um, I think uh, um, this is how uh, new technologies can uh, help to create interactions between people, building spaces, and I think um, I think that uh, the physical space itself can be used as a more as a mirror as a as a screen and um, and the, the most important thing to me uh, regarding technology is uh, how rapidly it is changing and uh, devices and so on so I think it will be difficult to really actually integrate the technology itself uh, apart from a very um, simple way because it's changing so much like uh, you know for instance, if you go to uh, places that have a huge uh, LED screen uh, at the um, at the um, reception, uh, five years, three years later, it looks very um, very old uh, already, and uh, that's the problem with technology; it's changing so fast. So I think that uh, if there's a way to integrate it more um, in a simply and uh, like, um, for instance, uh, this idea of the project I, I, I presented in the beginning of Experience at Paris, where 
the technology is being used more as a as a as a digital platform, and the, the space itself is the, is is containing containing the, the the experience. So, to answer the question, I think, yeah, I think that uh, it has to be connected that way. I don't know uh, if technologically. Uh, it could be connected uh, differently. I think that in material, uh, in material wise, uh, it's important to use smart materials that can be recycled, uh, reused, uh, rather than you know uh, things that are um, not uh, not uh, not reusable or has to be re uh, demolished and, and so forth. And I think that uh, also. Um, um, yeah, I think that uh, it's uh, important to to think about uh, a building's flexibility. I think that uh, today we are in a da dangerous, uh, very dangerous um, move of uh, you know uh, trying to make everything very sustainable and uh, you know housing very sustainable, uh, building uh, offices very sustainable. But I think that the most unsustainable move is actually making a building that is only housing uh, or only uh, offices and, and so on. I think that, uh, you know, that's a, it's a dangerous and a weird kind of approach. Um, I see it very much in, in France. So I think that um, if there's a way to integrate the technology within the buildings, the walls, you know, Helping it to get to be more flexible, uh, make it more smart, uh, that would be great, and uh, so the the space uh, become more interactive. Uh, okay, I don't know if there's any other questions or if I answer the question. <laughs> I, I think I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not uh, part of the technolo technology gig guys. I'm more of the social gig girl. <laughs> so, so I think that uh, I'm, yeah. That, that's the idea I have now. So I hope it's um, could be developed later. <laughs> So I think that uh, to finish, I have uh, just a uh, uh, last announcement from um, Domenico. Um, is uh, that um, there will be um, a break for a little while because of the of the pack, uh, Passover vacation, and that uh, the next session uh, will take place the 18th of uh, April. And uh, this session will present uh, a tool for uh, mediation and uh, sustainability of architecture. It will uh, present the project uh, Eco Metro. And uh, also, um, I would like to remind you that there will be um, a reunion uh, the weekend of the 20 and the 22nd uh, until the 22nd of. April in Madrid. Uh, yes, I think uh, that is it. Uh, live stream uh, from Paris. <laughs> any any other uh, specification, Domenico? Uh, okay. So bye, and um, I hope to see you soon. Bye. <laughs>